Here's the star of the show today. I'm so excited to try this out. This is going to be such a time saver. Good morning, Modern Stutters. Today is harvest day. And it is, let's see, I don't know if you can see that, 6.40 in the morning. My goal is to have the first chickens getting ready to get harvest for 8 a.m. I don't do very good with goals. I get myself all worked up and wound up trying to make sure I get the time crunch. I don't want to be late. But, so what we need to do is we need to get the meat birds in the... What we need to do is we need to get the meat birds in the cage. We need to get the processing area finished, set up. We gotta get the hot water tank boiling, get the water up to temperature. We got our cord over there. We gotta get our plucker up here. That's, that'll be a huge time saver. And we gotta have breakfast. So hopefully around eight o'clock, we'll be processing the first bird. I don't do good with deadlines. I put too much pressure on myself. If you guys didn't hear the conversation with Off Grid and Doug and Stacy, I'll link that video here. But like when we were building our house, people would ask me, when do you plan on having it done? I never told myself or gave myself a deadline. We had a three month window, but I tried not to think about it and I didn't try to figure out how much I'd get done every day. Because if I do that myself, I get worked up and I end up doing worse. I'm better off not thinking about it, not giving myself deadlines, not putting the pressure on me. And just going, putting in. I know I'm going to go in and put in 110%. So I just got to remind myself of that daily, constantly throughout the day. Because otherwise I get myself way too worked up. And that stress ain't good for anybody. Last one, guys. doing in there. Before we forget, let's plug in the outlet for the plucker.
lot of this stuff is a big expense at first, but if you can use it for multiple things, it pays off for itself pretty quick. We've had, we've had this turkey fryer for, I was gonna say over 10 years now. We've never cooked a turkey in it. We've always used it for canning. We'll do the hot water bath canning in here, outside, works awesome. And then we use it for our processing our chickens. We use it a couple of times a year. It's paid for itself over and over again. Here's the star of the show today. I'm so excited to try this out. This is going to be such a time saver. And it is 7.54. We've almost made it. Let's go. Now this does have an automatic water hookup for the plucker right here. And then in here, it's got a hose that would spray it. We only have one hose over here, so we're just gonna have the hose over here with the garden sprayer on it so we don't have to keep unhooking and hooking it back up. And I would recommend a shutoff right here if you were gonna use this because you're not gonna want your water running all the time. I have a bucket with holes in it. So we're gonna use that one for under the plucker. There, and that'll catch the feathers. We're just about ready to start. One thing we like to do is I wanna use as much of the animal as I can. So we collect the blood. I keep a bucket underneath the harvesting cones. Put hay or wood chips in it because it's gonna coagul coagulate. It's gonna thicken up, basically. And if you just put it in a bucket without hay or something for it to bind to, it's a pain to get out. So I'm gonna put hay in the bottom of this and then at the end of the day, we'll dump it in our compost pile and it's gonna make for some awesome compost. Just trying to go over everything in my head and make sure we got it all set up. We got the chickens, the harvesting cones, the scalding water is at 150, so that should be good. We got the plucker, and then we got our station set up for viscurating the chickens. We got our knife, our pruning shears, some rags, oh that's what I gotta get. I wanna have a five gallon bucket full of soapy water out here for, so I can wash my hands. See, it's a good thing I was running through the checklist in my head with you guys. While I'm thinking of it, I just wanna to touch base. There's been a lot of people in the comments saying that what's up with your chickens, they don't look healthy, there's no feathers on them. It's the breed and the way they were bred. They are bred for fast growth, so they're growing so fast that their body can't even keep up to produce feathers. They just haven't gotten their feathers yet and they're over eight weeks old. So I guess it's kind of a good thing. You don't have to pluck as many feathers, but they just look ugly. So next batch of chickens, I wanna try raising something else. I don't wanna do the Cornish crosses. We care about how we raise our animals. We wanna raise them the best we can because that means we're gonna get better quality meat for us. That's why we do this modern homesteading thing. And so we can get good quality food because we know if we go to the store, just because it's organic doesn't mean it's good quality. And how do we know it's really certified organic? And then somebody just didn't pay anybody off and just put them on there. I've seen plenty of instances where barges are coming from third world countries and when they leave the barge, it's not organic, but when they get to the port in the United States, all of a sudden, the food that they have on the barge is organic. How does that happen? I don't know. That's why you need to know your food and know your farmer. We didn't make the eight o'clock deadline, but we got 8.35 and we're gonna be going in the plucker. Is it already done? Yeah, it's already done. Look at that. Seriously? Seriously. Look at the wings and everything. Everything's cleaned off. We have a couple of feathers. Was that like one minute? No, that was like 15 seconds. Yeah. Sweet! Let's do the other bird. I think they say you could do two, two at once, but I don't know if I would. They're kind of big. These are heavy. If they were small birds, I would do two at once, but these are definitely on the larger side. Pick up in the store. No other mess, really. No. More feathers.
got some tail feathers left. Is that set? Wow. That's awesome. Oh, you had it in that last time. Was fine, so. Yeah, but I don't think those were going to come out. I just have to pull them out by hand. Or I cut most of that off anyways. But that's awesome. <laughs> that's worth the money. Definitely. That ain't bad. Okay. Nice. This crate has been working awesome. It makes it so much easier and more convenient. <laughs> so for storing our chickens, we cut a little slit in the extra skin and wrap the legs down there so when we put them in these freezer bags, they don't poke through. We find doing six in a batch works well for us before we do the next step. Instead of slitting a hole in the bag to get the air out, we have a straw in there. I'll have Gina pull it out while I pull in the zip tie. And then they're nice, and then they're shrunk up nicely. Not much air left in there. Just have the zip tie. I can. Yep. Nope. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Using the plucker made it so much more easier and enjoyable doing this part of the chickens. It's not an enjoyable job, but it made it most enjoyable as it can be, right? Yeah, made sure it a, did. Yeah, made it a lot quicker. The shrink wrap bags work nice. Yeah. That little straw trick we did this year, that was awesome. So if you guys have any more questions about how we did something, leave it in the comments below. Share the video if you liked it. It really helps us grow and we appreciate it. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new to the channel. And we'll see you guys tomorrow right back here at Lumna Acres, a guide to modern homesteading, self-sufficiency, and freedom. Where was Olivia for that? She's in the house. <laughs> Bye. Bye.